Do you own a Hornby Class 50 and it doesn't run quite as you want it to? That might be your problem, the Hornby Class 50 bogey. Let's take a look. So, the Hornby Class 50. Why are we doing this video? Well, basically, 5007 Sir Edward Elgar, which is on your right, has always been a problematic locomotive in our Class 50 fleet. So, I had the TTS sound decoder in it, and I thought it was a decoder which was causing it to run erratically. When I say erratically, um, very jerky, very common symptoms and signs of a TTS decoder. Um, and when I brought it back to Highfield Road, it was going around and just stopping. So the first thing I'd done was obviously was to check my track and my power feeds to make sure everything was okay. Fairly confident it was all okay because everything else was running fine. And it was, everything was fine. So next I had to turn my attention to 5007. I thought, right, first thing I'll do then is check the wheels because as you probably well know, Wheels on locomotives get absolutely filthy if your track is not maintained regularly. And I will be completely honest, although I do stay on top of it, I'm not the best at keeping track clean. So um, I make hard work for myself in the long run. So, as I said, first thing was to check the wheels. I gave the wheels a very good clean with a, a wheel cleaning pen, like I think it's like fiberglass pen. So that was like the third or fourth cut. And you can see how black and dirty that is. Um, and it was still getting off dirt. Um, but they look absolutely shiny, really, really nice, like brand new. But you keep going, it still takes it off. So I, I stopped with that, put it on the track, went around, no improvement. It would travel a little bit and just stop dead. All the sounds would cut out everything. Tried it without the sounds, still done the same thing. Next week for all, oh, I'll um, give it an oil. So I put a little bit of oil on the worm drive. Now the worm gear itself is that little brass drive there. And that sits inside the bogey. And then obviously you've got your rod there which goes from the, from the drive across to the motor to make it all work as it should. So I gave them a good clean up and re-oiled them, re-lubricated them. Put it all back together, thinking, right, that's got to be what it is, because it normally is that thing where they don't like to work properly and they seize up. Nope, still no luck. <laughs> oh, so I was still troubleshooting. So then I thought, what else could it possibly? So I checked the track, I checked my power, I checked the wheels to make sure they're clean, um, I checked the worm drives, re-lubricated, still, and also checked the Hornby TTS chip. So what I did then was, like I said, got the chip, switched them over with another one out of Glorious, which is next door. Glorious now runs like a dream with 5007's chip in. <laughs> so um, it wasn't the chip, so the chip works absolutely perfectly. Put um, Glorious's chip in 5007, again another TTS chip, and still the problem persists. It was better. It was better, I'll give it that. It, it was an improvement, but it wasn't solved by any stretch of imagination. So it then really got me scratching my head. So I thought, well, what else could it possibly be? And now I'm gonna apologize for the background noise here because I am quite literally sorting through my Hornby Class 50 spares box. And I thought, well, the only other thing it could potentially be is that. Now that is a PCB board which sits inside a Hornby Class 50. Now that one there is actually out of Class 31, but little tip here for you. If you can't find a Hornby Class 50 PCB boards online for the ones you want, get a Class 31 one, but there's one important factor. When you buy the Hornby Class 31 PCB board, message the seller, or before you buy it, message the seller and just double check that the 31 it's come from is one with marker lights because if the 31 hasn't got marker lights, this PCB board will not function the marker lights on the class 50. 
So it's very important that if you buy one of these, make sure you ask the seller if the PCB board come from a class 31, which has working marker lights. So that's not what we're here to talk about, about anyway. So move them to one side. So that's the PCB board. I switched them over. It wasn't that. So I'm I'm still scratching my head, wondering what the bloody hell's going on. And I thought, well, there's only really one thing left it can be. Two, potentially. It's either going to be the motor. So I checked the motor. Motor works fine. And I thought, well, the only other thing it can be then is the bogies. And yes, that was my fault. So it was the pickups, basically. Um, something I probably should have checked way down the line before I checked lots of the other stuff. But it's one of those things where you don't want to take everything apart. Uh, so unfortunately I had to. <laughs> so yeah, the Hornby Class 50 bogey uh, and the pickups was causing me the problem. So that, I know I've gone on for about seven minutes now or so, but I wanted to show you this because I recently, a couple of weeks ago, had to troubleshoot another class 50 and I I didn't know it at the time because I ended up breaking it and I, I've done this numerous ways before but I ended up breaking a bogey and I had to super glue it back together and I thought there's got to be an easier way of taking these bloody things apart because they shouldn't break every time you pull them apart so what was I so first of all let's get rid of these locomotives and I'll show you what I was doing wrong um, I'm not gonna edit this video too much I just want to try and blab it all through and get it done um, if you prefer the videos this way, that's great. <laughs> but so basically, I a long time ago I asked some advice on these bogies and how you take them apart so you can change these wires over. And I was told that you've got these little bars which run through where my thumbs are, right? And then there's one there and one there. There's t there's two sets, one there, one there, and they basically connect together in the middle. And I was told that all you need to do is apply pressure but carefully pull the left one obviously to the left and the right one to the right and give it a little bit of a wiggle like that and they'll pop out and they'll come away and then you do this but you do it very carefully again with the bottom one as well so you don't bend the bogey frames all right and that was the way i always thought to be the correct way i've done it several times before and i've never had any issues except from twice so the first time I broke the mechanism, and which I will show you later, which runs through the rod in on each side. And But I thought it was already broken because it was loose anyway, because one come away really easy and then the other one was just lightly clipped in. And then when I'd done it again last week, I ended up breaking the little pins inside again, the little rod in. So I was playing about with these bogeys and I thought, right, how there's got to be another way. So I messaged my, my friend Rob who who is my class 50 man. So if I ever need any spares, which I haven't got, or I need some resprays for a locomotive or anything like that, he's the man, he's the go-to man, basically. He's a really nice chap. And I said to him, I thought, now, I had a problem with a bogey, which the, I thought the gearing had gone, basically, on the wheels, because when you, if you, you should check this as well. When you get your class 50s, all six should be gear driven, right? On the, on both bogeys. Now I had one where this one was just free running, right? And then on the other bogey, all three were free running. So I thought it was the, the gears inside the box, uh, sorry, the gears inside the bogeys which had gone. Um, and I'll show you exactly what they are because I have got some spare, he says, here somewhere. Um, here we go. So these are ones I've got off eBay, some spare ones, because I thought that's what had gone wrong. <laughs> I bought about two packs of those. I thought well, it'd be handy to have in the spares box, something I've not got. Um, but it, it wasn't, it didn't turn out to be that. So yeah, so basically those those gears can go. So this, this is another way you can get inside the bogey and check the gears as well. Um, so yeah, when, he, when I asked him his advice about the gears and how, how would you get to it? I was like, like I've got the frames off, but how would you get inside the actual bogey itself and change the gears? And he said, well, if you, if you look down the side of a class 50 bogey, now this is not gonna show up very well at all on this camera, so I do apologize, but I'm gonna try and point to it the best I can. So 
if you look down, once you've got your bogey away from the locomotive, if you look down the side, you've got a clip there. It's like a little flat sided clip that goes flush against the side of the bogey. You've got another one there, and then you've got another one on the back wheels there. And it's the same on the back. So you have another one there. And now the middle one is on the opposite side that is on the other side, which I don't know why they've done it, but it's there. And then there's another one there. So six, basically there's six little clips, right? So all you do, <laughs> believe it or not, is if you get a flat headed screwdriver or, or, or something which can manipulate these little clips, right? It's not gonna do it now, it's on camera. You wait and see. So if I put one down there, loosen that one off, then do that one. And you'll see that you'll see that there's a and you can't see, there's basically there's a little gap there now where they're starting to come away from each other. Try and no, I ain't got very good light here, so I apologize. So work your way from the back to the front. I got to make sure you're holding it. Make sure you're holding the center piece and not the frames as well, because you'll do what I just done and clip it back together. It's a little fiddly job. Can't find the other clip. Where has it gone? Turn him around. There you go. You can see that's coming away now. Oh, there well, must be still one clip on somewhere. Let's have a look which one it is. Oh, the back one's clipped on, so let's try that again. There you go. And as you can see, that is just. <laughs> and the wheels are falling out, basically. So. Oh, that didn't work out quite how I wanted to, but basically these clips come off like that, right? And then the whole bloody thing will fall apart. <laughs> but that's not a bad thing because it means all these bogey frames have come apart without you having to pull them apart. Now on these bogey frames, you can't. You might be able to just see on there, there's little raised section and that's the little clips I was on about, which I kept breaking when I was pulling them apart. So you don't want to be doing that because effectively they go into the frame and they clip together with the other one, you see. Um, can be fixed by superglue, worst case scenario. But anyway, that's how you get the bogey frame apart. I say really easily, I actually made that look really difficult, but it is easy. It's a lot easier off camera when you're not trying to focus on a camera and a bogey. <laughs> but that all comes apart. You've then got your main bogey frame where you can now see you've got all the gearing in there. Obviously you just want to make sure that all works as it should. So you put that to one side because that's obviously not what you're... Well, you can, to be fair, you probably should inspect these to make sure all the teeth are there on the gear still, make sure they all work. Worst case scenario, if there's any teeth missing on your gears, replace them. You'll see on the side of the bogey, there's four little little rods which go through the side of the bogey. They come out really easy. Just get something quite thin and push them through from one side to the other. And then you'll find that the gear in from each rod will pop out. All right, And then you can replace whichever one you need to by popping the rod back through. So that wasn't the issue. I just wanted to show you that obviously how you get the bogey away. If I bring back the bogey side, the frames back, these, this is the pickup on the class 50. So it runs all the way across the side of the bogey. And they quite simply come off by getting your nail underneath the back or on the side, wherever, whatever's easiest. Or you, sometimes you can just do it from there and they just pop away, all right? So they only fit on one way, so they are handed, so that's handy. There's your pickup. You want to take the little tab off. Sometimes they can be bloody stubborn. Sometimes they fall off, shoot on the floor, and you never find the buggers again. But luckily you can get them with spares, so if you do lose them. And then all what happens is the wire, this bloody little thin crappy wire, <laughs> literally just goes, sit, goes through that hole and just sits up flush against the back. And I think I've mentioned in one of my old 50 servicing videos that these wires, they are crap. I mean, they're all right, they do the job, but reliability-wise, mm, I said I've got, we've got about 50 50s in that fleet almost, I think. So doing this on every 50 is gonna be quite time consuming. But if you just have one or two, three or four maybe, my advice would be, if you're feeling confident and you're having, and you're having problems, of course, these little, um, pick up wires, bin them, get rid of them, 
upgrade to something a little bit thicker. This might be a little bit too thick, um, but this is what I've been using and it seems to be all right. The only problem I have with this wire is, is when I go to lay it through the recesses on the actual chassis inside, um, it is a bit thick to sit in the recesses, but I just tie them together and they're all right. Um, yeah, so get yourself um, a bit of wire, cut its length, obviously I'm not gonna show you how to tin it, cut it, etc. You, you know how to do that. If not, I'm sure there's other available videos on YouTube where you can find that. They always go through the top, all right? So I'll put it through, bend it, and then you hold it in place, it's hard. I'm trying to look at the camera at the same time as doing this. All right, bend it back so it's flush. Get that air, I don't want hair on it. Get your little rubber grommet, or your little grommet, and then you put it back over. And then locate it, all right? Now that's seated, that's done, all right? Then what I would do is get a pair of pliers or some wire cutters or something like that and just very carefully each side to send it home, all right? So that ain't going nowhere. So that's one done, all right? That's what I would do on that one. Do it on the other one, okay? Um, and then it's a case of putting the bogey back together. Once you've put the bogey back together, which I'll show you in a minute, okay? And once you've got it all wired back up, now there is a video on my YouTube of how to wire a class 50 or how it is wired and there's quite a few of them depending on the PCB board you've got so go and check that out if you need to know how to rewire it once you've got it all rewired I'm pretty confident in telling you that that's going to solve or help solve your running issues if it's cutting out going along on the layout and that's what resolved it for me anyway so let's um put this bogey back together a minute Take this one off as well actually i almost forgot to do one see that one come away quite easy then get rid of that wire that's crap so excuse my french um so that's the longer one so that's fine oh yes yeah, so there's one probably one other thing to note as well on the bogies for the class 50 make sure your wires are long enough to um make sure your wires are long enough to reach back to the PCB board because the PCB board is not dead center inside the locomotive. Apologies about that. I was uh, just interrupted there. My partner come in to talk to me, so sorry about that. Um, yeah, so again with the contacts, just had a quick think about that. Um, you can, I just said obviously about putting the little grommet back on like I have on that one. Alternatively, if you're feeling really, um, well, I don't know really what the right word is, but to get a better connection, now this will work fine with the grommet, don't get me get me wrong, but if you want to achieve a better electrical contact and you're, you're feeling like you want to get the solder and iron out and have a bit of fun with it, you can always solder that to the plate, the copper plate, and then you wouldn't need the grommet. Um, but I'm, I don't think you particularly need to. You, you probably, you know, you, you would get a better connection definitely, but you don't have to. Um, so let's pop that back on there a minute. And let's send him home. And I'm, I'm just gonna uh, show you now about putting the bogey back together. Um, I think I say it, I was just saying, and I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but the, um, the pickups are longer on the bogeys. So you've got to make sure you've got them right. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, make sure you've got the, obviously the two, the two long black one, a long black one and a long red one on one side. All right. And then the other bogey frame, if you're doing both bogeys, would be shorter or longer depending on which one you've just done. Um, worst case scenario, you can just switch the bogeys around. It's not a drama if you end up putting the short one on the long one and then the long one on the short one. Just take both bogeys out rather than rewiring it switch the bogeys around from one end to the other on the loco and you're fine. There's no issue with that whatsoever. It's just important that you make sure that the, the wires, your longest wires and your shortest wires are long enough to meet at the shortest and the longest point on your PCB board. So you could just give yourself loads of wire, feed it all the way up through the body and the chassis, and then once you get to the PCB board, terminate it, cut the wires off and cut them to length. That might be the better advice. So let's put these bogeys back together. So obviously that, 
that is your frames all right and obviously just make sure you put a black wire back on the one where the black wire come from and an or orange or red wire from where the red wire come from so you know which is positive negative etc all right so just follow follow whatever it came, whatever it was before all right and if you're not sure what it was or you picked up a spares or repairs 50 and you're trying to put it back together check my video um, and it will show you which color comes from what motor all right any questions drop a message down in the comments box below and i'll be happy to help this video was going on longer than i expected it to um so apologies let's put this back together now so wheel sets the wheel sets on the hornby class 50 they the, the gear is always on uh, always closer to one side just always offset slightly to one side and it doesn't matter which wheel goes in which location just make sure when you're looking down looking down the bogey that the the gear sits in the sorry the gear on the the wheel sits inside the gears inside the frame all right and then when you do that you make sure obviously that the wheels itself are all in line because if you put them the wrong way around you'll see that that's not in line yeah so you can see it's not right straight away but if you turn it around the other way perfect so once you've got your wheels in all right get the base wherever i've chucked it to now these bases do go on that way oops sorry i'm at the camera so the bait get your base all right and then just clip it over the back and then just send it home and it should all clip in and then once you've got that base on just test the wheels to make sure they don't move all right so they're good so there's a lot of hands in the way here so that frame's on now so that's more or less good to go all right take the cover off a minute and set home the, the worm drive Yeah, that's fine, perfect. Right, so next bit then, move the gear over there, is, I'll take the one drive out a minute, so it's all free rolling, is to put the frames back on. So, this is quite simple. All you have to do is get the wheels, all right? You see you've got these little brass round tabs on there. Make sure the little pins on the wheels locate into there, so tip it it on its side like that that's what i do locate the two rods through the holes male to female make sure the little pins on the end of the wheels fall into the recesses of the pickups all right and this can be quite fiddly All right, so that's that one in, look. That's why, oh, that one's got pulled. Be careful, because you can bend the frames there. All right, so that's in. All right, oh, so he's in. Good, good, good. So that's one side in, turn him around. And then do the other side. So again, tip him upside down. Put your thumbs over the, the pins manipulate the wheels so they fall into the pickup holes on the frame sorry i said my hands I keep apologizing my hands keep getting in the way but unavoidable when you're using a tripod all right and they can they can actually fall out of the other side so it can be a bit annoying one there's just one give me a problem you know let's get him back in this is a lot easier when you're not doing it on camera none of this thing none of these sort of things go wrong do they as always right let's come, come away again right, let's try that again because i obviously didn't want to play ball and it's all going wrong as it does when it's on camera. 
put the pickup back on. Well, sorry, you're going to have to move away from the camera. Right, that's back in now. All right, so that's all done, all, all set back home. And that's your bogey back together. Now, just to make sure all the uh, the gears and the wheels are all aligned, put your worm, worm gear back in. So, all right. I'll try and find the housing because I've chucked it somewhere in my wisdom. Oh, it's there, look hiding put that back on so it's seated and then that shouldn't if you put pressure on it they shouldn't move so you know that the gears are in turn them upside down again just try moving the wheels make sure there's a resistance and they don't go anywhere all right that's good so they're all good now if you you might get you know you might spin a little bit freely if you push them too far out of line so just hold them flush down to the bottom just try them and they should be good to go. Now that bogey, what feels like a year later, is good to go and be, be um, obviously put back onto the chassis and fed into the locomotive. So that's how you change your pickups and how you take a bogey apart on a Hornby Class 50. Apologies, it went on for a bit longer than I was expecting it to. Things always go wrong on camera uh, when you don't want them to. Um, any questions, by all means, get in, you know, get in contact, leave a comment below and, and I'll try and show you or walk you through it in another way. Um, or if you think this video was a complete mess and all over the place again let me know in the comments below and I'll try and do a better one anyway everybody um, take care thanks for watching I hope you've enjoyed my other uh, another how to for the Hornby class 50 fingers crossed that that resolves your bad running just a side note before I go if you um, are having problems with your Hornby class 50 and it's got a Hornby TTS sound decoder in it and it's got jerky running Try changing CV 150 to 1 and CV 10 to 2, and that should help improve a little bit. All right. So again, CV 150, change it to number 1. CV 10, change to number 2 to start off with. And that should greatly improve the running and stop jerkiness. All right. Uh, if it doesn't, and you've got a couple of Class 50s with TTS sound codes in, change, change the chips over from 150 to the other. Believe it or not, sometimes that actually works very quickly I should say oops <laughs> yes so um I ended up making a mistake so have a look see if you can tell me what's wrong with that basically I put the frames on the wrong way around these little um, rail deflectors should be on that end they should look like that so when you put the pokey frames back together <laughs> Just make sure that where the square block is for the worm drive, the rail deflectors are closest to it. All right, so they should be on the right side, if that makes sense. So that's that's forward facing. The rail deflectors should be forward facing. That one's wrong. That one's right. Never mind. We learn.